the upcoming session uh, will offer actionable ways through which businesses can convert social platforms into a lead minting machine. Please put your hands together to welcome Mr. Michael Mokhtar. He's the founder at Grow Advertising. Hi, good morning. How are you today? So uh, my name is Michael. I'm uh, a co-founder and uh, uh, CEO of a company called Grow. We are a digital marketing agency based in Egypt. Uh, and uh, I can see very few people here from Egypt, actually. So shout out to the, uh, Egyptian, the very few Egyptians uh, here in Matcon. Um, uh, actually, we have been uh, experimenting uh, the, all the digital marketing formulas for the past like seven years until we've reached some uh, very good secrets and uh, very good formulas that uh, enabled us to generate millions of revenue to uh, our clients and customers. So uh, I'm gonna be glad to share with you today uh, some of the tips or the, a quick guideline of uh, how a successful social media marketing uh, should be done. Uh, first of all, it's, it's always uh, important to, uh, to define what social media marketing is. For us at Grow, uh, and on a personal and professional preference, uh, I think that uh, social media is one of the revolutionary application of the marketing science. So uh, back to the science, we should understand marketing so well in order to uh, make social media very successful and efficient. And going deep in the, in the science, uh, we will find that any successful marketing should be done on two uh, successful bases. Which, is, which, which are science and art. So understanding marketing is always uh, useful when, when you uh, work in, a, in the digital marketing uh, industry because these are all applications like social media and uh, the uh, search engine marketing and every digital marketing application is based on the science. So the platforms uh, themselves are built on the science. So. Uh, if you understand marketing very, very scientifically right, you'll do successful social media marketing. So uh, social media for us is not about uh, just uh, likes, engagement, and followers. It's way more than that. It's, uh, it can transform, you, transform your business overnight. It can generate millions of revenue if it's done efficiently and right. So number one uh, step in any successful social media marketing plan should be determining your goals. So uh, what do I want the social media to, uh, to serve my brand or how, how it's going to serve my brand? Is it, uh, uh, is it wanted to, to achieve just brand awareness? Is it uh, um, um, purpose to, uh, to drive in-store traffic, phone calls, uh, website traffic, website conversions? Um, so we need to first uh, determine the, the goal behind the behind What's, what this is all about. So after determining the, the goals, we have to craft an action plan that we call a strategy. So no business can survive without a strategy. So whether it's a, a marketing strategy, a digital marketing strategy, a social media, whatsoever. So a strategy is your guideline to achieve the objectives or the, your action plan to achieve the objectives. How you're gonna do it, how you're gonna achieve it. First, uh, in the strategy, which is my, um, the most important uh, step ever for me, is you have to know your audience. You have to study your audience and research your audience. So uh, they're actually in the, digital, in the traditional marketing in the, in the old ages. This was uh, a bit of a challenge because we, ha we, we have nowadays uh, very magical tools that you can um, uh, you can know your audience from very easily. It's very seamless and very accessible. And uh, in the old ages, uh, it was a bit of a challenge. So one of the, the most um, uh, preferable tools uh, for me personally uh, is a free tool by Facebook called Audience Insights. And this is a snapshot from Audience Insights. You can actually, I'm assuming you guys know all that uh, because you're professionals. Okay, some of, the, some of you don't. Uh, audience Insights is a great tool for, for knowing your audience before communicating with them. So we have to, to know everything about the audience. We are doing the marketing communication too. 
So uh, it's a free tool by Facebook. And there are other premium tools uh, like Social Bakers, uh, Hootsuite, and that stuff that you can know your audience from. So for example, you can, you can type um, the geographical uh, uh, segmentation, like people in the United States uh, whose ages are from 18 to like uh, 45, interested in real estate and that stuff. And they bring up all the info for you. It tells you the, the market volume and, the, and, the, and the, the volume above here, like five million prospects. Uh, the potential buyers that you need to uh, communicate your, all the communications, that create all the marketing communications too. Uh, it gives you the demographics, how, how many uh, men, how many uh, women, the, the age demographics, also the lifestyle and the interests and relationship status, everything about them. And in some countries like uh, the United States, you have access to uh, very advanced data like uh, uh, their financial income, uh, the household income, the, uh, how, the, the, what's the percentage of, uh, uh, of the home owners, of home renters, which is not available in some other countries. So uh, audience insights is our favorite when, our, when we're studying audience for the first time ever. Then we have to study our competition. So if you're doing a marketing plan for your clients or your, uh, the brand you're managing, you have to see what the competition is, uh, is doing, uh, how they're communicating the, uh, their core messages, their core values, uh, what's their frequency of posting, uh, um, uh, what their, uh, their unique selling propositions that you need to, to develop and do better. So uh, studying the competition is crucial. Then the very popular metric or term uh, SWOT actually we oversee or overlook the, the SWOT analysis sometimes, but it's actually very important. It's very important to know your strength, your brand strengths, and uh, weaknesses, the opportunities, and threats in order to develop a successful marketing plan, especially for social media. For us at Grow, our agency, and for me personally, I believe that humans are brand, uh, brands are humans, I'm sorry. So uh, brands is all about humans. So the brand eventually uh, feels like human. So we need in the social media strategy to personalize that identity. So every brand is having a unique characteristics, uh, is having a unique style, having a, a unique identity, okay? Like, exactly like humans. So uh, we need to personalize the tone of voice, the, the style. So we can imagine a brand, uh, a human um, interested in, in formal wares, uh, formal suits, uh, who speaks elegantly all the time and looks very well, uh, likes some colors and, um, and dislikes some colors. So brands are human. So we need to uh, personalize the tone of voice, the, what positioning we want to we wanna put in, the, in our customers' minds and everything related to this. So uh, it feels eventually that uh, customers or consumers or even potential prospects uh, are dealing with, uh, uh, not dealing with robots, so uh, dealing with a human brand. So uh, after we determine all this, um, social media platforms uh, are many actually. There's uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Pinterest, uh, Snapchat. And, and, and many other growing uh, uh, platforms right now on the moment. So it's very important to determine what's your best and uh, most efficient platform for your kind of business, for your kind of geographics and kind of business. Because maybe if you're in the Gulf, uh, Gulf area, for example, uh, you'll find Twitter performing better than Facebook. or the, you're, you're gonna find uh, uh, most of the, the prospects use Twitter more than Facebook. Uh, Instagram more than uh, more than Facebook, so it's you, you should select it based on the geographics first Then know your type of industry and what's the best uh, Social media platforms to to do the communication on so uh, For example in Egypt back in Egypt if you're uh, doing the communi marketing communication for a, a Restaurant or a cafe for example Instagram is the best option ever because it's a platform that is uh, built on highly visual uh, stuff, you know. Facebook is going like more in, uh, in, an, in the news direction or in the, the articles direction. So if you have a blog, 
Facebook, I think, Twitter is the, are the best platforms ever. So you have to, to study by, by data-driven or by insights the best platforms for your uh, social media marketing. So in the, in the buying behavior, do you know what happens before, uh, before anyone buys anything? There is a, a scientific process that comes through our minds. It starts, it's, uh, some people call it AIDA, it's A-I-D-A. It starts with the awareness, then interest, desire, then action. And in between, there happens a, a lot of other stuff. But it starts always with awareness. I'm aware that I need a mobile phone, okay? Then I do a research. So um, I bring Apple, Samsung, uh, Oppo, and all the other brands, and I, I start comparing, okay? So then I get interested in some specific brand or a mobile phone, then I get desired, then I take action. So in the research, in the, in the comparing alternatives part, I think the most important uh, uh, way to make bra your brand uh, differentiate is to communicate their USPs or the, the unique selling propositions. What do your brand have that other brands d don't? Just as simple as that. So why would people come to your brand and buy your products other than your competitors' products? So this is so crucial. I think. People who, uh, brands who focus on, the, on their UVPs and USPs, uh, they're, they're not gonna uh, be finding any challenges in their marketing communication because they have a very good product tailored to their target audience. So communicating your brand USPs is really important and we should do it as much creative as we can because you need to stop your audience at your unique selling propositions that that's basically why they should buy from you and not from the competitors. So content plan, number four is content plan and it's very crucial. So how are you gonna tailor your messages? Is it gonna be videos, visuals? Uh, is it gonna be just uh, written stuff, uh, blogs? Uh, th the content is the king. So number one, uh, step in the content plan is to set your pillars. So uh, what's the percentage of uh, the branding content that we need to make? What's the percentage of the engagement uh, uh, content? What's the percentage of uh, just the, uh, the, inf the informative content? So you need to set your pillars because the more organized your content will be, the, the higher results you'll, you'll get and the more consistent you will be. A very uh, uh, important uh, step of the plan is your copywriters have to be updated all the time with the trends and everything going around them because newsjacking is one great uh, technique to do successful social media marketing. So they have to be aware all the time of uh, what's going, going, out, uh, uh, going out around them and they use it in their favor in the content plans. By experimenting, uh, the content plans, very, very different techniques in the content plans for, for like seven years now, we have figured out that con contests or sweepstakes are very crucial to the, to the viral and organic reach. So as you know now, the social media reach, the algorithms are just squeezing the, the organic reach um, very tightly because you, you'll have to pay ads eventually. So you'll have to find some ways around to, uh, to break this algorithm and, and do a successful organic reach and go viral. Contests and uh, providing free giveaways, asking people to, to engage uh, with uh, some um, um, answers, answers to questions, do some stuff and um, uh, like uh, follow some instructions and then apply or submit the answers or do some instructions and follow them and, and send them to the brand or social media pages and then they might be awarded or, give, uh, or get uh, like free product or free giveaway. It helps the, the social media organic reach uh, increases so well. Exactly like the, the uh, uh, sweepstakes or the contests, 
uh, it comes the UGC, the user generated content. So I, if, I'm, if we are a coffee brand, for example, uh, we're asking, we can ask people to uh, go visit the store, uh, shoot their cup, their coffee cup, uh, or take a selfie with it and upload it using a, a specific hashtag. This is called user generated content. So you use the audience to do marketing for you on behalf of you. I think uh, recently uh, Mark Zuckerberg said in, the, in, the, in his last keynote that 80% of Facebook in the, in the upcoming two years are going to be only video. And it's very obvious recently that uh, Facebook is transforming to be more like, uh, to compete more with YouTube and uh, even the monetization options are going to be allowed very soon in some uh, um, uh, areas. It's already allowed in the United States. So it's encouraging people to uh, or, or content creators or video creators to create more content and uh, make money out of it. <clears throat> so videos uh, are so crucial. Actually, the, the Instagram uh, TV, the IGTV, the, the native platform that they built recently for, uh, for Facebook videos um, are a proof to that. We have a very big challenge in uh, in catching the audience eyes all the time it's it's i think the biggest challenge is the, the, the biggest challenge that most uh, of the agencies face nowadays so uh you need to create your message very clearly and uh, you need to target the right audience and uh, uh you need to uh be as much creative as you can and be stopper okay and uh, all that will happen if you uh, create mind-blowing visuals or creative visuals um I'd be glad to show you some examples of how we tackled that back in a grow in Egypt, in our agency, uh, for some of our clients. This is a brand called Second Cup. It's Canadian based, and uh, they have really strong coffee. It's the the most efficient uh, in the country, right? So, this is our creative process uh, behind it, behind this visual. So. Uh, we um, we created a concept that uh, that reflects the, the strength of the coffee um, in a very very uh, mind blowing way or a creative way or a stopper way. So we brought Einstein and we manipulated the the energy equation to be two uh, C means like second cup, the, the name of the brand, and it's really a stopper. Okay, we have done a lot of manipulation and. Color retouching, so you could never find a, a colored photograph of Einstein. So we created that. So uh, this is an example of uh, of creative visuals. Another example for second cup. We would not mind that uh, uh, our best designers ever, our directors, spend like three, four hours doing uh, just a. Uh, a simple design or a post because we care about quality, we care about positioning, we care about adding value to the... This is what all the, the agencies should do. So this is a USP actually, they differentiate than Starbucks for example, that they have Turkish coffee. So we had to do it in a very, very creative way. Minimalistic yet uh, creative. This is another client, uh, one of the best uh, of real estate uh, by the Red Sea. And uh, the, they have a project that is actually under construction show. So we, uh, we wanted to communicate it in a fun, uh, creative uh, way. Unlike the traditional ways of doing the real estate marketing. This is ERA, the number one world's real estate company and consultant. They have 4,000 offices around the globe. And this is one example of how we're communicating their USPs that we talked about. This is another example. And this is my favorite. Do you get it? All right. So these are all examples of how we can communicate uh, our brand USPs or UVPs in a fun, creative, stopper way. So stopper content, as we said, 80% of social media users are now only scrollers. They don't take any actions. So we have a big challenge here. 
It's very important for our copywriters to stay updated and catch the new trends and use them in our favor uh, for the content. Hashtags are very important for the discoverability according to the platform. So Instagram, you should use hashtags more than Facebook because the algorithm is built, built mainly on that. Uh, it's based mainly on, uh, on, uh, on hashtags, unlike Facebook. You can use hashtags in Facebook for just the campaign name or highlighting some uh, uh, the topic related to the campaign or being consistency in the campaign name and whatsoever. But in Instagram, it, the, the hashtags uh, are really crucial. It's not important at all to, uh, to create like uh, for your brand or your, uh, your client uh, like 40, uh, 50 uh, posts per month as long as they're not be high quality, okay? So we uh, grow our agency. We, we go more in the, in the like, we, w our average posts for our clients per month uh, are just maybe 12, from 12 to 16. They don't care about, we convince them not to care about the quantity as long as the quality is really high because this is what they should care about. Uh, this is what will add value to their um, brand equity and to, to their positioning. So as we, uh, as we agreed that brands are human and we're talking to humans, so humans uh, do not like to be sold to all the time. So you need to add value through your content and you need to, uh, to make people in any possible ways uh, like or love or fall in relationship with your brand because otherwise they will never buy from you. So he, humans only buy from brands they love and trust. So after we've done all that, of course you're gonna be receiving inquiries, messages, comments, and this is where the community management should come. So first, we need to listen very carefully to the audience. We need to know their needs, their requirements, uh, their complaints. So, uh, and there are a bunch of social media listening tools like uh, Social Bakers, uh, for example, or any other premium stuff that you uh, pay to get the, the, the listening to specific keywords, what the, the people are talking about, uh, specifically in some industries, in some topics, in such uh, specific keywords. Then you should be active and responsive, of course, because um, you might have a prospect that responded, responded to the, the creative communication that you did and got interested and the desire went high and he wants to make a purchase. Now, he sent you a message on Facebook or Instagram and you did not uh, respond for like tw 12, uh, uh, 12 hours, for example. So you lost the prospect and he went ahead and bought from another competitor. So we have, again, brands are human, so we have to build relationships with your audience to fall in love with a brand and then make the purchase decision. Crisis management is very crucial. So uh, our community management team, for example, is very trained to handle any kind of crisis very fast and very responsively to uh, to convert uh, an angry customer to a loyal customer again. And this is very important. Actually, we're trying to take it to, to the next level in moderation. So our community managers, for example, that the community management team who is responsible for the moderation is working alongside with the creative team to, uh, to uh, craft like creative communications in the comments and messages. So we sometimes use uh, memes, comics, funny, hilarious stuff to uh, make the, the community as much as we can engage all the time and uh, uh, entertained and uh, it leads to, uh, for them to love the brand more and more. So you can make the moderation creative too, not just the, the content. So uh, I think last step in the, in the social media strategy is the paid ads. So there are two main reasons why uh, all the social media platforms uh, force you to make ads. There's one true reason and one, uh, and one lie, okay? I'm, I'm gonna tell you the lie first. Uh, they lie to us saying that uh, 
imagine if you're uh, all the pages or the accounts you're following, uh, imagine that you're seeing 100% of the content every page you're following posts. So uh, your news feed is gonna explode, definitely, and the servers are gonna explode. And that's a lie, but they say it. The true reason is you have to pay money. So, uh, and it's good as long as they give you uh, some advanced options to, uh, to reach your target audience, your high quality audience. So ads is my favorite, actually. I'm gonna walk you through uh, some quick steps to do a successful uh, ads campaign. First of all, we have to, again, define our goal. So what's the campaign is for? Uh, is it for brand awareness? Because the algorithm will work differently if you uh, need brand awareness campaign rather than an engagement campaign, rather than a website conversion campaign. So you need to define your goal. If you're a mobile app, your main objective will be to drive installs and make conversions on the app. Ask people to to install the app and make high quality actions like add to cart, um, order, um, a completed the registration. That's what matters. Then targeting. This is the, the most efficient or magical way about uh, digital marketing in general. It allows you to reach your high quality, narrowly selected audience. Uh, so you can target people with their ages, demographically, geographically, with the regions uh, they live in, um, psychographically by the lifestyles and interests, and by the mobile phone they're holding, by the car they're riding. So it's very narrow and efficient. Ads is not a hit and run, a hit and run um, uh, matter of stuff, you know. So you have to test as many as many ads as you, uh, different campaigns, different ad sets, as many as you can. And then stick to the winning formula, or the winning ad. So you can change the targeting, the, you change the creatives, the, you can have some fixed stuff and make one variable all the time, and do as many trials as you can. And stick with the winning ad. Again, brands are human, so don't sound like an ad. Make people as much as you can fall in love with your brand. Conversion pixels, of course you've, you're familiar with this, uh, with this term. Uh, Facebook and Instagram and all the, all the, all the digital uh, marketing platforms like Google, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, give you uh, some really valuable uh, tracking code that you can install in your website or app that tracks what people actually do inside, inside the, uh, the website or app. And this, uh, this is good for analytics, so it, it, it gives you an eye inside the website, uh, it gives Facebook or Instagram an eye inside the, fa uh, in the, inside the website or app, and allows you to use these data to, uh, to generate uh, audience, uh, custom audience and lookalike audiences that are uh, uh, very high quality and, uh, and installed your app, for example, so you can target specifically people who installed your app, these are the most potential to you or to your brand. Then retargeting. There are uh, a very, a very, familiar, uh, very familiar terms in the, in the digital marketing. Uh, they are custom audience and lookalike audiences, as I just said. And with those uh, two kind of audiences, you ask Facebook or Instagram or any social media platform to uh, generate audience according to some data you, uh, you give them. Um, whether it's, uh, it's a customer database from your POS, uh, whether it's uh, uh, people who visited your website, people who engage with your content, people who installed your mobile app. And then you ask the social media platforms to do look-alike audiences, to generate audience like them who are very similar in the interests, the behavior, and the buying habits. And then comes the retargeting. So uh, you might have a prospect who visited your website but didn't make a purchase yet. You have to retarget them. Finally, you have to have a healthy and convenient budget. So we have clients who come to us with very inconvenient uh, requirements and dreams, and this happens all the time. And we have to advise. We have our duty is to educate, not just do uh, digital marketing. So a healthy budget is crucial to, uh, to a successful campaign. 
Finally, you have to measure all the metrics of the, because this is the final result of all the social media strategy we've talked about. And focus only on the, on the important metrics, on the high quality metrics. So ignore the vanity metrics. For example, if, you, uh, if your main purpose of the digital marketing campaign is to, to make conversions, so uh, it doesn't make any sense to uh, count uh, likes or followers on Instagram or Facebook as an important metric. So it doesn't make any sense. So you have to measure two metrics, your engagement rate, how much, you, how, how much percentage you uh, succeeded to uh, convert out of, the, out of the, all, all the people who saw your ads and stopped and took an action, and your direct conversions through the pixel and uh, uh, through your offline data whatsoever. So uh, this uh, was a briefly uh, all the guidelines to the, all the steps that we follow uh, back in our agency that I believe causes a very successful social media uh, strategy and, and very efficient results as we've been experimenting. So uh, I hope that was useful to you guys and thank you very much. Thank you so much, Michael. Does anyone have any questions from the floor at this point? I can't see with the lights. Anyone have any questions? Yeah, sure. This one down here. Can we have a microphone down the front here, please, guys? Thank you. So a lot of the use cases that I have seen over here are applicable for the B2C, uh, I would say. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that again? Uh, so a lot of the use cases that I have seen in your presentation are yeah. applicable for the B2C as, a, as an environment. Uh, so what are your thoughts uh, to implement a social media campaign uh, for B2B environment? Because uh, in B2B environment, a lot of decision makers are the CXOs and they are not aggressive on Instagram or Facebook. So how to tap them and what should be the content strategy in order to attract the businesses? And uh, so I understood about the consumer, but would love to know more about how to attract the business. You mean the creative visuals I showed, right? That's correct. Yeah. Do you think it's aggressive? It was fantastic. It's meant to be aggressive, yeah. actually. No, that was pretty good. My yeah. question is, uh, what should be the content strategy in the B2B environment? The environment? Yeah. B2B. Uh, the B2B, yeah. yeah. No, no, actually, the, the B2B have a, a totally different strategy. Like, uh, for the B2B, uh, in the very first beginning, you have to use, like, LinkedIn as a social media uh, uh, platform. Your main platform would be LinkedIn. If you're a creative agency or a highly visual uh, agency or some sort of stuff, like, and like um, in our cases, we use Instagram as well to show our creative portfolio. The website is really important, is the most important of them all, you know, and Google Ads, SEO, they drive traffic and you collect, uh, you magnetize uh, uh, leads, uh, potential leads through the website, through LinkedIn and through social media platforms. So. Uh, prioritizing the, 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 the channels, you should start by the website, with the website, then LinkedIn, and any other platform, other platform that might be useful to you. Uh, in our agency, Instagram brings us most of the clients, but this is the behavior in Egypt. I don't know, you have to research the behavior in the other countries, but the website and LinkedIn are most important for B2B. Any other questions? Okay, great. Thank you very Thank much, you. Michael. Thank you so, Thank you so much. much.